Hey everybody, welcome to the Fired Up with CJ show. Today we have Stephanie James here and she is going to be talking about igniting your best life. In fact, she has a title of a book that's exactly the same. Can you hold up the be- your beautiful book, Stephanie? Woo, the spark, igniting your best life. So welcome, Stephanie. Thank you, CJ. Just honored to be here with you. Um, so tell me a little bit about what inspired you to write this book, um, what it means to the spark and what a spark filled life means. Yeah, great questions. You know, I think what inspired me to write the book is a need to share all these, you know, incredible experiences, 30 years of being in the mental health and personal development field you know, interviewing some of the most brilliant minds and serving hearts on the planet on my own radio show and podcast, and just a lot of research I've done over that 30 year career, and really learning like what works best with my clients. You know, I'm a psychotherapist, I'm a transformation life coach. So, you know, I've, I've really tried these, I've tried them on myself, and I've tried them with my clients. And so it really was aligned with my mission, which is to bring as much love and healing to the world as possible. And you can do that one client at a time. Wonderful. And then I, I kind of did the radio show and the book around the same time. So it was like, just oh. wanting to share this information and get it out to a wider audience um, and hoping that it would serve that way. You have to, I don't know if you can hear the train. I'm in downtown Fort Collins and we have a train that runs right by my office. So oh, I love trains. That. I actually <laughs> love trains. They, they actually, I have a really positive association with trains. So they make me happy. It's almost like a high five from the universe when you're saying this. So, so to me, it's more like you know, a chorus of, like, <gasps> of happy sounds going, yes, it's about having, you know, love right and healing on. to the world. Yeah. So I actually I have a completely that. different way of thinking about it. I'm like, oh, trains. Yay. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love I love it as well because I grew up in Fort Collins and so just hearing that is yeah, it's it warms my heart as well. So anyway, but going back to you know the spark, what the spark really means for me and why it's my brand is because it truly to me is our essence. Mm-hmm. And and some people might call it like our spirit or the God seed, whatever your name for that is, but it's the part of us that can't be quenched. You know, like water water can't wet us, you know, wet it, wind can't blow it out. It's like this internal flame within us. And even though things might get covered up, like that essence of us might feel covered up with circumstances or, you know, life's difficulties, it always exists. Mm -hmm. So then our, our work becomes, how do we excavate that spark? so that we can really allow ourselves to live through that place and be conduits for that life, love, healing to go out into the world. Mm. Okay, so tell me about your own life and how that, what was, so your spark is to, is to share the love and healing in the world. And so what were the excavation that you had to do so that you could be the conduit that you are now? Yeah, I I will share with you, I, I truly was one of those people that was very, very blessed. The first 13 years of my life, I had this incredible childhood, wonderful, warm family, lots of cousins and grandparents, mm. aunts and uncles always around. And I was a total daddy's girl. So I would follow my father. He was a professor um, at the university here. And like, if he was going to his office on the weekend, I was trailing with him. You know, so I could just write on his chalkboards or if he was out raking the leaves, I was raking the leaves too. And Mm. even on the weekends when he would pretend to nap or when he would nap, I would pretend to nap just so I could snuggle up. (laughs) That's really sweet. Just so I could snuggle up on the floor by him. So, you know, and, and so I had this really blessed childhood until one night when I was 13 years old, when literally my brother and I sleep was interrupted by the sounds of screeching tires going down the driveway. And we wake up and here we are looking out of the second story window as my mother is tearing down the driveway in the car. And we watch our father jump on the hood of the car and he's beating on the hood of the car. Oh my gosh. 
unbeknownst to us, my father had just told my mother that he was having an affair and was going to leave her. Oh my so gosh. It was like from that moment on, this most precious childhood, truly this golden happy childhood mm. was completely shattered and irreversibly broken. Wow. Um, because I was a daddy's girl, I moved in with my father mm. pretty close pretty close after that because my mother was struggling so much after 18 years of a committed marriage and at the time it just wasn't emotionally stable mm, and so it was so real sorry. natural to go with my dad and, and was your you. did and your brother go with your dad too my brother stayed with my mom because he definitely felt like he was much more of a mama's boy you know and, and not wow. in the biggest sense but it was kind of like the whole family split apart and oh. um you know, what, what happened, what was interesting, what happened though, very quickly after that is, you know, I had a stepmother who did not um, think it was healthy the way my dad and I were so close. She didn't like that. Oh, no. So from the moment that we moved in together, I was no longer allowed to have a conversation alone with my father. Oh, I wasn't no. allowed to oh. do anything alone with my father. And literally to this day, um, I, I am not allowed to be on the phone with him alone. So oh my God, that's everything awful. changed 180. And when I moved wow. in with my mom at 16 years old, he stopped talking to me for a year. <gasps> wow. And I hear all this because it, it, there was so much heartache. And I literally went through after that at 16, probably, you know, a decade of just a lot of self-loathing. A lot of not understanding, you know, how my own father could reject me and that, you know, I took on this, this image that I must not be lovable if my own father would, you know, reject me. And so I had a lot of excavation to do, you know, to get back to the spark. So when I share this, it really comes from this depth of experience and understanding what that feels like from going, being this absolutely happy, shining light where I loved everyone, CJ. Mm. I was the kind of kid where when I showed up at Free School Academy, there were kids on this little front porch. It was in an old house and the kids would be waiting for me. And when I'd come in, we'd all jump up and down. And we were like, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I just experienced everything. I mean, I, I can't even tell you nature, other people as just love. So it, it was a lot to get back to that. And mm. so I definitely, I did my work in therapy. I did, you know, spiritual work, a very, very, you know, spiritual journey through my life. And just to share with you in one moment, the one of the biggest transformations happened, and this is about 20 years ago, um, I was at a healing school in San Francisco and went for a week. And when I met Dr. Jaffe, the presenter on the way in the door, he shook my hand. And it was one of those moments where it felt like he was just like reading my soul. He's just yes. staring into my eyes, you know, and I was kind of like, ah. <laughs> and so he gets up there, there are about 40 of us, 40 students. And he's up there on stage talking and like in the middle of his presentation, he stops and he says, hey, and he points it, you know, points into the audience. Hey, you in the blue coat, I have a message for you. And I'm like wow. looking around, like thinking like, oh my God. And I look down, I'm like, ah, I'm in the blue coat. <laughs> you know, I'm in the blue coat. <laughs> and he says, this is my message. And he says it and I can't hear him. It's and just, I, you mean I, you just go null set, like you can't hear him? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, like there was nothing coming through. And I said to my girlfriend, did you hear him? And before she can respond, he says, okay, my dear, what, what I'm trying to tell you is and he says it again, and I still can't hear him. Wow. So everybody's laughing at this point, right? So people are starting to, you know, laugh and go like, not everyone's laughing, but definitely people are like, whoa, wow. And he says, okay, my dear, obviously you have some resistance to hearing that. Right. And what I'm trying to tell you is, and right then all of the air conditioning units in the place came on and nobody could hear him. <laughs> so so it's just becoming like this, you know, hilarious scene. And so he invites everyone to come up because the stage has these stairs leading up. He's like, everybody come up here. And so when everybody gets on the steps, you know, he finally says, okay, the message for you, when I could finally hear him, is stop trying. Mm. 
stop wow. trying. Because my whole adult life uh, up until then was trying to earn love. Mm -hmm. I felt like, oh my God, if I could just, you know, look good enough, if I could have the right clothes, if I could have the right career and the right house and the right relationship, then, you know, somehow I could be lovable. Mm -hmm. And it was this pivotal moment where I realized, oh my gosh, I can't keep thriving and striving so hard and trying so hard to earn love. I have to be it. Mm. And it literally changed my life mm. that I could start stepping into. And it really became a journey of then befriending and learning how to love myself. Mm. Okay. I love that. And I want to talk in the next segment, how you stop trying and striving and how you learn to love yourself. Cause I think that that that's like, oh yeah, okay. You love yourself, but it's actually a big a big deal to actually be able to um, express the love that you have within you versus like hoping to get it from other people. It, it's an interesting, it's funny that you mentioned this because I just read this in another book for a guest I'm talking to tomorrow. And um, he talks about that, you know, in a lot of spiritual texts, they talk about having an infinite heart and infinite love. It's fine. It's not finite. It's infinite. And so we wait for someone to give it to us before we give it to other people, or we wait to gather enough resources in ourselves to share it. And um, that was kind of a aha for me because it's like, well, wait, wait a second. If it's infinite, then what if we start shining it now without any hopes or desires of um, receiving it? So I just had maybe the aha that you maybe had long time ago when this event happened. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that in the second segment. We've been talking to um, Stephanie James and she's talking about her spark. It was that your spark. Is that what you describe as your spark? It, it was one of them. One I think them. we have many of these. The yeah. many of them. Okay. Yeah. Um, the spark igniting um, your best life. Can you hold up your beautiful book again? Yes. Thank you so much. Woohoo. Okay, good. Thank you so Thank much. 